Hello internet people and hello members of the Tiddlerhood. And this is just a very very short video to talk about macros. Understanding macros. We're going to start off with just some definitions and then we're going to get into a little tutorial of putting a, a very simple macro together. Later on uh, I hope to put out together some more tutorials related to macros. There won't be that many but uh, there's some more coming later on. Let's start off with uh, what are macros. A macro is all a macro is is a snippet of text, uh -huh, a chunk of te a text identified by name. A snippet of text can be any one of or a mixture of plain text, wiki text, HTML code. Referencing a macro by name, a macro reference is a request to replace the macro reference at that specific location with a snippet of text uh, related to the uh, well I didn't word that well <laughs> to the snippet of text related to the identified name now there's some more text here we're not going to go through all that you can go read it later if you want I'll add a link to this uh, tiddly wiki so you can go reference all this stuff after the fact a basic macro, you know, uh, there, there's different ways of doing macros. I'm just going to show the most common basic look of a macro. It starts off with a define line, right, which gives the name of the macro, and it would list parameters within the parentheses. We're going to talk par uh, about parameters some other time. Just for now, we're going to talk about a macro with no parameters. So there's a defined line with a macro name. There's an end line for the macro. And then everything in between the defined and the end line, that's your snippet of text that uh, we talked about in the description. A basic macro reference. Now, so in Tiddly Wiki speak, we would call this a macro call. Uh, I tend to flip flop, well, mostly flop, towards calling it a macro reference. And all it is, it's the name of the macro, uh, the name that identifies that snippet of text in between your double. Uh, don't do that. There. A basic macro reference looks like this. Uh, it's the name that identifies the snippet of text for the macro with double less than and greater than uh, symbols on either side. So this is a macro reference. Now what does all of this look like in a tiddler? If we had a tiddler opened in edit mode the very first thing at the top of that uh, the text for that tiddler, we would put the macro, the definition of the macro, and then we'd have you know the content that you would normally have in the tiddler. So some content, however much wiki text you'd have in there, and somewhere in there you would have a macro reference, and this is what you know your edited tiddler would look like. But when that tiddler is displayed uh, in view mode, or when the tender is, or the tiddler is rendered, it would look like this. We don't see the macro. We only see the macro when we're in edit mode. In view mode, the macro doesn't show. We see the content of the tiddler, but then we see where there was a reference to the macro. We now see that snippet of text instead when we're in view mode. And this is all this is all that a macro does and for the life of me I don't know why I have a hard time remembering that I often keep thinking or make the mistake of thinking that the macro does something well it doesn't really do much all it does is it spits out you know a snippet of text that's all it does 
No, I say that's all it does. It's a powerful thing, and we'll see that in, in, in more elaborate examples later on in other tutorials. And the what are the benefits? You know, why bother with macros? Well, look, the benefit of a macro is you can write a snippet of text once, and then everywhere else you need that snippet of text, instead of having that whole snippet of text right there at each spot, you only put a macro reference. So it, it, it's, it saves work. And if ever you need to change that snippet of text, you only need to change it once in the macro definition. You don't have to go change it at every spot where that text is needed. Now, <laughs> this is kind of like for, for, for the giggles, uh, I see this as cognitive or semantic happiness. There, there are a couple little things that are nice about macros. One, there's con less cognitive overload. You know, if you have a nicely, uh, uh, if you have a nice label that's short and sweet, instead of having multiple lines of wiki text there, you just have that one label. So it helps keep your wiki text small because you've got nice little labels, and macro references, instead of having big chunks of wiki text repeated all over the place. And a well-designed macro name mm, is really helpful in describing what's going to go there. So it your macro name it becomes a description. You know, and it's, it's what I like to call cognitive happiness. Now enough of that. Let's get into a simple tutorial, and I'm just going to open that separately. Let's get rid of this. Now in this tutorial, we're going to create a simple macro. Our goal, we need a macro to add first line indents, i.e. five spaces, first line indents to paragraphs in stories, just in stories, not all over the place throughout our whole tiddly wiki, only wherever we have to have a story and we want some first line indents. Now there's other ways of doing this other than a macro. You know, we could get into cascading style sheets, for example. Yeah, that's the only way I can think of off the top of my head. But I don't want to get into cascading style sheets. Let's pretend cascading style sheets do not exist. So, all we want is to take a story, and we're going to use a sample story here, to which we want to add those first line indents. This is one of my favorite stories. This is a Zen story. Read it on your own time. Uh, a little aside before we get into uh, putting together a macro. Uh, I want to talk about a little bit of research on spaces. Sometimes you want to do something and you have to learn a little bit of HTML. You know, uh, why certain things happen. For example, if I had a tiddler wiki, a tiddler, sorry. If I had a tiddler and I typed things in exactly like this with five leading spaces for this paragraph. Although that's what I type in when the tiddler is rendered, tiddler is rendered, the spaces are gone. You know, we're right back to a block format. So what's going on there? Uh, it, it has to do with how, it's got nothing to do with Tiddly Wiki, it has everything to do with how white space is handled by HTML. Uh, CSS, etc., etc. In the case of HTML, white space is largely ignored. White space in between words is treated as a single character. And white space at the start and at the end of elements, for example, paragraphs, and outside elements, white space is ignored. And so, how do we get around this? And one of the most confusing things, all right says it again, one of the most confusing things to new users who are creating web pages is that they cannot press the spacebar multiple times to make additional space. To create extra spaces before, after, or in between your text, you have to use this funny little code here. And what this does, it tells the browser, look, right here, put a space. And the browser will do so. And here's an example. If we entered th this text into a tiddler, with all of those codes at the start, five of them, 
when we're viewing the tiddler, it'll be rendered as this. We'll see the spaces. So, the browser is nice enough to say, okay, space, 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 space. Whereas before, when we actually put spaces, the browser would just strip those spaces away and say, not needed. Treating it like spaces that are only there for programming or creating the web page as we're, we're adding HTML in there and we want to add some spaces just to make it more readable when we're editing it. But then when the browser shows it, it strips them out. Not so when we put the codes. Anyway, a little sidetrack here on research related to spaces. Now, let's get into building our basic macro. And here's our text. And let's get into editing this and building a macro so that way in front of each paragraph we only need to put a macro reference and the macro will take care of putting in there that snippet of text which are those you know goofy characters. Now what we really want here is instead of typing uh, pasting those those codes instead of pasting, pasting this series of code in front of every one of our paragraphs we want to just put a nice little name here that says something along the lines of this nice and readable so instead of having all those codes in every spot we want this in front of every paragraph not messy readable we know what it means indent and we want to declare at the very top of the tiddler our macro so define the snippet name is called indent and we always have parentheses where normally we would have parameters but that's for another day and at the very end we have our end and then the meat in this sandwich is this stuff now if we're lucky this will work every spot where there's an indent every macro reference will be replaced by the snip the snippet of text defined by that name and let's do a little preview see what's going on and there it is so just remember when the 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 when, when the macro gets referenced, these don't get translated by spaces and return spaces to the spot. It's actually all of this that gets brought down and replaces every macro reference. Here, 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 and here. And that's what's going on. Now my problem is I keep thinking that this stuff gets evaluated changed and then sent over no this gets sent over as is now it'll be the same kind of thing even with macros that have parameters but we'll explain that in a future tutorial anyway uh, that well, let's see where it worked and that's all there is to it not very complicated. Like I said, the very basic introduction to macros. Uh, we'll delve a little bit deeper into things in future tutorials. Cheers!